Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy. Welcome into episode number eight. Now, this is of Murder Your Bookie, week number six of the 2020 NFL season. Now, I'll own up to it. I have not been very hot at all the last two weeks. The first few weeks, we were on fire, straight up flames. And then the last couple of weeks, we've, at least myself, I've died down a little bit. But we're getting a comeback week here, a get right week for week number six. Now, again, caution as we're recording this. Some of these games may end up getting canceled and shit because we don't know at all because stuff just happens with the coronavirus. Right now, the Atlanta Falcons game is in jeopardy, so we have not picked that game. As you guys are watching this on Saturday, maybe that game is completely canceled or maybe it's perfectly fine and playing on like Tuesday again for some reason. So just understand that the lines are also uh, likely going to move slightly a bit. So Lucas, do you have anything to say before we get into this, uh, this breakdown here? I mean, we've had a bad last two weeks, but it, but if you've taken the whole season, we're still doing really good. So people that are getting mad maybe or whatever, I guess uh, increase your sample size and we're doing pretty solid. Um, and we're going to rank them this week because I feel like people might not know. I mean, besides the lock, people might not know which ones we actually like the most. I think the ranking will help to sort of give an order which ones we like the best. Yeah, for sure. It'll definitely help you guys also figure out which picks you may want to take. Understand if you take the picks has nothing to do with us. It was your money. You decided to do it. So understand that. And uh, if you want to fade us, go ahead and do that as well. But that over the season has not worked very well. So I'll begin here with my first pick of the day. And that is the New York. Well, I'm going to do my number one pick last because that's going to be the lock. So my number two most confident pick is the New York football Jets up against the Miami Dolphins in Miami. I got the Miami Dolphins minus nine and a half. Now I took them yesterday at minus eight and a half. So this line is moving at a rapid rate. Because the Jets are starting Joe Cool, Joe Flacco again, they seem like they can't do anything. Last week, I was like, ah, the Jets 10, that's kind of a high number getting plus 10. Maybe they'll be able to cover against uh, the Cardinals. They weren't able to do that at all. They got smacked up on Sunday, and I don't expect it to be anywhere close in this game. Now, the only reason why I'm a little bit worried about this, not really all that worried at all, is the fact that Ryan Fitzpatrick, once the team gets hot, once he starts playing hot, for some reason, just typically in like the second year in a system, just dies down and crashes and burns with the team. But I'm going to go ahead and believe in it. I like the Dolphins. They're my favorite team. So take that with a grain of salt. But I typically don't bet on them unless I feel ultra confident in it here. And the Jets offense looks atrocious. The Jets defense looks atrocious. The Dolphins destroyed the Niners last week. That's all I need to see to think that the Dolphins can cover this at minus nine and a half in Miami at home in a game where the Jets probably stand no chance without Sam Darnold so what do you think about this game yeah I mean I I don't think there's I don't there's no reason to take the Jets I guess in this game I mean the 10 might be or nine and a half might be a little high but I think they're a really good teaser uh six point teaser down depending on where you get it because some places it is eight and a half so you can get them below the three I wouldn't recommend going over the three and a half. If you're going to play three and a half, you might as well just play nine and a half and not decrease your odds per se. But yeah, I think, I mean, everywhere the Jets' strengths is run D, and it's not like the Dolphins are trying to run the ball down people's throats. They're just going to let Pitts eat pretty much against the banged up secondary that is the Jets with okay safeties. But I think, yeah, I think this is a game where, I mean, I think there's a reason people are on the fence because we could definitely see the like 20 to 16 17 that we normally do with these games or we could see what we saw the last two weeks with the Dolphins which I think that's probably what it's going to be so I like the the nine and a half there and it'll honestly probably go up so I'd say get it now uh if you can because I can't imagine this goes down at all yeah on Sunday I wouldn't be surprised if since this is a four o'clock game people are going to like fucking lose their money at one o'clock and try to get right and it'll be like minus 13 somehow yeah and then you're just getting screwed over kind of like with the Raiders last week against the Chiefs so what's your first pick here to discuss yeah, my first one besides the lock is the Cowboys Cardinals. This move, this number is in, increasing. Actually, is under fifty five, and I guess I there's the, the the whole like theory of all these all these overs have been hitting all year, but the last two weeks it's actually flipped to the unders. So eventually, at some point, the book has to the book starts making these numbers high enough to where these unders have to hit, right? Like that's that's the, it's the same process for why they're low enough for the overs to hit. It's not like these teams are. Yes, they're scoring points, but it's not like they're like throwing up 30 bombs every game. Some games are like that, but it's always like that too. Yeah. The 55, I, I, yes, I could see this game just being two not so great defenses, even though the Cardinals have been pretty good over the whole season. The Cowboys defense has obviously been pretty bad, but it's not like the Cardinals are like this. 
I, don't, I think what we saw with the Giants last week, even though their offense isn't that good, is similar to what the Cardinals show. It's not like this Cardinals offense is, like, legit or anything. They have DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler Murray, and kind of two running backs. Christian Kirk has been up and down. They don't have any tight ends. Andy Isabella, like, never plays. So these offenses aren't <laughs> high-paced, especially now that Dak is out. I think that we're going to see, like, the – I think people are thinking, like, oh, yeah, Dalton will be fine. That's why this number is so high, that they can still score points. Like, there's no way Dalton comes in and keeps up the efficiency that Dak had. So that's just going to slow this offense down. They're not going to be like, all right, Dak, go throw the ball 45 – or Dalton, go throw the ball 45 times. They're going to let Zeke get the ball more. This might make them focus on their defense a little more because they know that they're not going to be able just to throw up points whenever they want. And 55 to me, I mean, in theory, you're saying it's a 28-28 game. I don't think there's going to be eight touchdowns scored in this game even though these defenses aren't that great and the Cowboys defense isn't that good. So that's my, that's my number one. And this number has been increasing. So this honestly could get up to 56, 57. There's like 54 yesterday. So I, I mean, I already played it at 55. I'll probably play it again if it keeps going up. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. Now I took this game as well. This is my fourth most confident one, but I got the Cowboys money line right now. They're not favorited. They're the underdogs in this game. And it's not even that I really feel like they're that much of an underdog. If I'm being completely honest with you, the Arizona Cardinals team has been spotty. The beginning of the season, they looked amazing. The last couple of games, they haven't looked so hot. Obviously last week they played up against the Jets. So if you look bad against the Jets, then you're just a fraud of a team. So they looked very good against the Jets. And I expect the Cowboys to wake up here and win this game. Now, like you talked about, was Zeke when they started running the ball in the second half after Dak went down they just looked like a much better offense obviously they're not going to score seven million points when they're not throwing the ball every single down because they're not going to be down by a million points against the Cardinals I think the Cowboys will slowly be able to eke this one out I don't even feel the need to play the spread the spread was plus one and a half and I feel like it's just not worth it I'd rather just get the money line plus 106 and feel a bit happy about it now I'm not ultra confident in this one again this is my fourth ranking pick but I still am going to end up taking this I take all these picks on Sunday and I'm going to feel pretty confident in the fact that I think that Andy Dalton is a good enough quarterback to lead the Cowboys to a couple of wins obviously the team has been pretty shit so far this year but up against the Cardinals not the greatest defense I think that Andy Dalton will be able to figure that out all right what are you thinking about the uh the Cowboys do you think they're stand any chance against the Cardinals though without uh, Dalton or without Dak yeah, I mean, I think the the right side is the money line. And I kind of, yeah, I think the right side is the money line here. Just, I don't know. Like, I think it's the reason they're not fit. Because you have to think about a home field advantage, which obviously we don't know what it is this year. I've said that before. Normally it's two and a half. So they're at plus two and a half, plus two, plus three. You're saying that the Cardinals are a touchdown better than the Cowboys. And, like, I get – the process behind that, but like, I don't think increase or decreasing the efficiency in terms of going from 300 yards total offense to 450 that the Cowboys are putting up. Like, I don't think that a, that 150 yards in theory, like makes this team worse because it's not like they're bad on offense by any means. They're just not going to be putting up 40 points a game. So I think, uh, yeah, I think the right side is the money line here. You could honestly tease them up to eight and a half or even nine. If you get a three or even eight, if you get a two, um pairing that with the Dolphins if you can get the Dolphins below three would be solid I think so yeah I think the right line here is that I think this is a good live betting game I think this is something where if you can get any of them outside of like the six range and the live betting that's pretty solid but yeah I agree I think this will be it'll be an interesting game because this could be the last time we see the Cowboys not favored in most games or like this is because it's one of those spots where the bookmakers don't know what to do right they don't know if they keep the Cowboys a favorite. They don't know if they put it over three and give you the three and a half and give you the the, the hook on it. So, yeah, I think this is a good spot to capitalize uh, early with the Cowboys money line here. Yeah, I agree. So what is your uh, next game here? Yeah, my next one here is the Broncos plus 10. And I guess I, I just don't understand the concept of this line. It was at eight and a half last week. And obviously this was pending them playing on Monday at like – four or five, whatever they were going to play at. Yeah. So it was at eight and a half last week. And that was with Drew Locke in question. That was with Cam Newton, most like 70% going to play in that game. So Cam's back, Gilmore's out, and Drew Locke's back. Probably fans going to play. And the line went up one and a half points. I I, I mean, I think 10's too high. I mean, I also, obviously I'm a Broncos fan. I, I don't think they're going to win this game. I think 10's way too high. I think the, the Patriots defense is good, but it's not that great. I think the Broncos have enough explosiveness on offense, even though they've only seen like one and a half games of this actual offense. 
not even because Sutton's not even going to play. Now Gordon got a DUI, but I I guess I just don't understand the, the one and a half point swing in favor of the Patriots for Drew Locke coming back and them losing Gilmore. So I'm just kind of confused on that. So I'm going to take advantage and take the 10 here. Um, this is something where if you're watching the game or whatever, or live betting, you can definitely sort of hedge it a little bit if you get like a Patriots minus three in game or shoot a Patriots plus money if somehow the Broncos go up. So there's definitely a lot of room in this game to capitalize, but 10 is way too much for a Patriots team that really hasn't beat down anyone yet. No, I, I, I can agree with you. I just don't know if I'd take it at plus 10. I think I'd have to wait for it to go a little higher up. I don't feel ultra confident in the Broncos is my problem, especially without Melvin Gordon. There's no way in fuck Melvin Gordon plays in this game, in my opinion. And without Melvin Gordon, I worry a bit about the Broncos, to be honest with you. So I don't know what to think about this game. I think I, I side with you on the plus 10, because normally when you see a double digit number there like that, it's almost hard to take the opposite side. And I think that the Broncos are OK enough to keep up. I just wouldn't be surprised if Bill Belichick was really pissed off and just whooped the shit out of the uh, the Broncos. So with that said, my next pick yeah. here, my third most confident game is the Rams at the San Francisco 49ers. Now this is really pending the fact that not that the Dolphins smacked him up. The fact that I think Jimmy G may end up trying to play, forcing himself back into a situation that he clearly was not healthy at all. Last week up against the Miami Dolphins, he played with that uh, ankle injury and he wasn't stepping in the throws correctly, which was leading to very bad passes up against the Dolphins defense, the Rams defense, much better than the Dolphins defense, the Rams offense, much better than the Dolphins offense. So I think that the Rams end up winning here pretty easily by at least, I'd say, seven. So I'll take the Rams minus three and a half. My only issue with this is Jared Goff because Jared Goff either looks like Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, or he ends up looking like fucking Mitch Trubisky. He's either really good or really bad, and there's really no in-between. And my only worry is that we get the bad version of Jared Goff and the 49ers are able to keep it close, even if Jimmy G plays or Big Dick Beathard or Nick Mullins. I really have no idea who they would play at quarterback. With that said, I still think I like yeah. the Rams a lot in this game. Minus three and a half. Yeah, I can just go to my my fifth pick because I, I had the Niners plus three and a half. And this is kind of like another like theoretical sort of aspect to it. So the, the line last week, the look ahead line was Niners minus two. And I get the Niners look terrible last week. They should be getting Richard Sherman back this week. They should be getting back mostly their other corner this week. And I just think like, I mean, the Dolphins played good last week, like respect to them. I think that game was kind of fluky. I get Jimmy G kind of came back in. Jimmy G is not that great anyways, right? Like he's not yeah. this quarterback that you can rely on all the time. Most of it was coming back in. The whole running back rotation was screwed up. I don't know. They just, they just didn't look good. Uh -huh. They obviously lost to the Eagles the week prior. So I, I don't know. It's tough because like I just don't see the Rams covering three and a half, especially when it's at San Francisco. The Niners are 0-2 at home this year, but in – Shanahan's career there they're elite at home if you get Sherman back and Mosley back I feel like you can contain really the only weapon on the Rams team is Woods I get to have Higby and Everett but Cup hasn't done anything this year so I don't know I think I'm just going to take the hook here uh that being said if it gets under three and a half I would probably go Rams side but I think it's just uh, a six point swing from a game last week just doesn't seem legit to me I mean, even more than that, if you're taking a home field advantage, too. So, yeah, I think it's – I just think I'm going to side with the Niners on the three and a half and get the hook here. But I definitely think the Rams, as of now, are the better team. Yeah, the thing is, I don't see this line really moving at all unless Jimmy G's announced to not start. So, I think we're probably stuck here at, like, three, three and a half, or four – probably all the way up until Sunday. And the line may actually, the only time I see the line moving is getting closer up to the game on Sunday again when all these people are losing their bets at 1 o'clock and then everyone hammers the Rams and the Rams go to like minus yeah. fucking 7 and then you feel like a dumbass when you bet them. So what is your uh, next pick here? Obviously, you just gave your your fifth ranked pick. My fifth, yeah. So it's my fourth here. I had the Packers at minus 1 um, against the Bucks. If you were smart last week, you took them at my, uh, plus 2 because DK decided to offer that. It didn't make any sense. They decided to offer that after the Bucks lost to the Bears. And they threw out a plus two. It's been up to minus two and a half on the Packers now, down to one, down to a pick someplace. It just – they're getting Devonta Adams back. Yeah. The the Bucks are getting Godwin back. Okay, you could say that's a wash, but, like, not really. Like, the, the Packers have been elite without Adams. Now you're bringing back in a top five wide receiver in the league, and the Bucks haven't really – had a full team, I guess. I don't like. I don't think Godwin moves the needle as much as Adam does. 
And I think the Packers are just straight up a better team as it is. Like, I think it's a better team this year. Alexander will stay on Evans, and he's been shut down the whole year. Yeah, Godwin can have his 10 for 160, but that doesn't win you games. And then you come into the running game here. Rojo's decent. Aaron Jones is probably about a wash, I would say, in terms of how they move the game. I just think Lafleur is a better coach than Arians. I think, I think what they've showed this year is they've just pounded on teams with no offensive weapons. And that's not saying they, like, had them before, because this is the whole thing we talked about where people thought the team got worse because they – didn't add anyone on offense from last year when their offense was good last year. So it's just people, I think people just need to kind of buy into the Packers and they just don't want to because, oh, their fantasy team didn't get a wide receiver two for the Packers or something. So I'm going to take minus one here. I have the plus two. I'll probably take a pick them later on it too. I think the, the book that I use as a pick, the DraftKings had minus one. So I'm definitely going to smash yeah. that. And I mean, I don't know, Brady's just washed. That offense looks horrible. The defense is good, but I don't know. I just don't, they just don't look good. And I, just can't see them winning this game. Yeah, I mean, both the books I use have them at minus one right now. Uh, even the one book I looked just recently suspended it, and now it's just money line straight up pick them. So that's kind yeah. of how it's going to move too. I don't think that at any point the Buccaneers are going to be favorited unless people, all the New England fans come in on their money with their, their new Tampa Bay fandom and put a bunch of money down on them. With that said, I like Rodgers. Rodgers has been very good recently. Now, I was kind of a doubter of Aaron Rodgers, and he completely proved me wrong, which would make sense because they drafted Jordan Love behind him. They don't give him any other options around him. We, you kind of just talked about that. The other wide receivers there aren't fantasy relevant, but they are pretty good fantasy wise or real life wise. Alan Lazard was very good. Obviously, they suffered an injury to him, but with Devontae Adams coming back, I just see no way the Packers don't lay an absolute smackdown on the Bucks, and the thing is, the Bucks last week lost to Big Dick Nicholas Foles, so I highly doubt they're going to be able to stop uh, Mr. Discount Double Check Aaron Rodgers. So my next pick here is the Le Titans going up against the Houston Texans. I got the Tennessee Titans minus three and a half. Now I was a big proponent last week of betting the mortgage on the Bills. I was like, there's no way the Bills are going to lose this game. And in reality, it was a trap game. It was a super dumb pick by me because apparently when you don't practice, maybe you're just way more fresh. You're super clean. You're ready to go. And that's exactly what happened. The Tennessee Titans rolled in there and absolutely murdered the Bills and left them dead uh, at the stadium. I'm surprised Josh Allen even made it home. It was just embarrassing. Josh Allen didn't look very good. I expect to bounce back from him this week. But the Titans defense looked legit. The offense looked legit. And they didn't even need Derrick Henry to run for 7,000 yards in order to win that game. Ryan Tannehill was making excellent uh, plays. And with A.J. Brown back, and now I would assume Corey Davis plays in this game. Now, again, I don't understand how the coronavirus uh, works. Like, I really have no idea how they determine if you can come off the IR or not. He missed last game. I think he should be good to go this game, even with or without him. I don't really give a fuck. Janu Smith, A.J. Brown, Derrick Henry, the triple threes there. I like those guys, and I think they beat down on the Texans here. The Texans have not looked good. They fired their head coach, and I don't know. I just don't trust betting on the Texans ever. I faded them last week with the Jacksonville Jaguars, thinking they'd cover six. They didn't at all. They smacked up the Jaguars. But I think the Tennessee Titans are just that next level of a team. We saw Derrick Henry toss that man, Josh Norman, across the, the hall last week. So I think that Tennessee Titans are a lock here at minus three and a half. Now, they're not my lock, but I feel very confident in them. Even at five, I actually like the board a lot this week, even though there's a, not as many games as normal. Yeah, I mean, I think – uh, the Titans are just a good team. Uh, they're, they're my Super Bowl pick. They're the only Super Bowl future I took. They, they're just good. Like I, I, and I think people like maybe now might realize that. I mean, I think the Bills are a little fraud. They haven't played anyone. I think they'll the the Patriots. I think might two zero. When I said that before, I think the Bills are good, but they're not this MVP led Josh Allen elite team. I mean, obviously Trey White was out, but I think even with Trey White in the game, like it's not like they were stopping Johnny Smith at all, like uh, with their two elite safeties. So I think the Titans just do everything right. Their defense is top 10. It does good. It doesn't allow a ton of big plays. And then now you go against this Texans defense that is brutal. I think this line's a little inflated because the Texans did win last week and everyone's like, oh my gosh, now they might be good. But they also put the Jaguars last week. So yeah, I like this line here. I might wait till three, even if that, but I might have thrown them in like a money line parlay or something like that. But no, I definitely think that they'll they'll get them here. These games usually tend to be close, but that was when the Texans actually had weapons to throw the ball to. But I think I'm going to take the Titans. I like the Titans side on this one. All right. Sounds good. What is your next pick here? Are we down your lock at this point? 
I think we're down my lock. You have one more if you want to give that one. Yeah, I, I got one more. I got the Browns at the Steelers. I should have given it earlier when we were discussing it. Or no, actually, no. They This goes into my lock, actually. So we didn't discuss it yet. So I got the Browns at the Steelers over 50. Now, I assume this line is going to move up. Like you said, the, the unders have been hitting recently. The overs at the beginning of the season were smacking. So now I feel a little bit confident in this one. Not ultra confident. Again, this is my sixth ranked pick. So not complete confidence. But Baker Mayfield obviously ends up getting banged up at the end of the game. But he said he's not a pussy. He said, I'm, I ain't no wuss. Mama didn't raise me like this. So he's going to play in this game. Now, I think the Steelers defense does look very good. But I think the Steelers offense can put up a decent amount of points and if the Browns just score maybe two touchdowns and a field goal or something I think this one could cover the fucking Steelers offense looked amazing last week Chase Claypool ate Darius Slay for breakfast and I think that the Steelers offense has looked very good and the Browns defense while pretty good I think this is a revenge game as well for the Steelers so they're going to put up some big points here after Miles Garrett caved in their boy Mason Rudolph's head last week or last year so I think the Steelers are going to put up a lot of points here and I think the Browns will just be able to crawl into this get close enough maybe with some Kareem Hunt touchdowns maybe with with Odell because Odell does good every other game that's my theorem uh he did really shit week one really good week two back and forth every game he did bad last week so he's in for a good week this week and that means that the Browns are going to be able to elevate this total enough to hit over 50 not ultra confident again but uh what do you think about the over in this game yeah I mean I think the Browns defense is brutal like if you would have told me this team was three and one I would have told you that Baker was playing good four and one he's playing four and one he's playing terrible like it, it the, the Browns will come back to normal. Like, they're, they're a 9-7 and seven team at best. I get their 4-1. and one. They played the Cowboys defense. Cool. They played – I don't even know who they played last week. The Colts defense. Colts. That, they played Phillip Rivers last week. Like, come on. Like, it, it, they're not – a 4-1 four, a four team does not have a quarterback that's in the bottom half in the league and adjusted completion percentage, QBR, completion percentage. But he has, like, 900 passing yards in five games. And, like, now you're going to go against this team that's going to make you throw on them, right? Like – I, yeah, I mean, I think the over is a good bet. I think the Steelers will just shred this. I mean, Claypool's a freaking beast now. I think they, there's no way the Browns can stop all the weapons the Steelers have. Big Ben hasn't played the Browns since two years ago. Maybe I, I don't fact check me on that, but it's, it's no, kind it's of just definitely like true because they didn't uh, play, last play them again. The last time, <laughs> the last time he played them, they were brutal. He probably ran, he probably didn't even get to play the full game. That's how bad they were. And now he gets to go shut them up. So, yeah, I like that here. And then it leads into your lock uh, if you just want to get – I don't know if you gave that. I might have blanked out maybe, but uh, – I didn't. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers minus three. I mean, the Browns, they have looked good. But, again, here, the Steelers are a much better team. The Steelers, obviously, let the uh, Eagles yeah. get a little bit close last week, a little too close for comfort. But I believe the Steelers ended up covering, depending at the number you got them at. But the Steelers do look very good. The Browns are all right. I actually think Baker is a little bit better than you're saying. I'm not saying he's, like, a fucking top five quarterback, top ten quarterback. But he's like an average quarterback and in certain scenarios in AFC North matchups you've seen the average quarterback win shout out to Andy Dalton who just randomly won a bunch of games a couple of years ago but the Browns at the Steelers I like the Steelers a lot here I think the defense is very strong I think Baker will end up at the end of the game making a false move that'll really lead to the Steelers just daggering this one in here maybe I'll end up throwing a pick six or something or maybe they'll just call some Odell pass or Jarvis Landry pass to Odell and Jarvis won't connect on it considering he connects every single time on it and they'll end up throwing a pick or something so I like the Steelers here i also like the over a whole bunch pittsburgh minus three i mean i don't think the money line was juicy enough we don't take money lines as locks but if it's a nice number i'd also take that pretty happily so what do you think about uh the steelers again you kind of just already noted that you like them a lot yeah i mean this line was four and a half so the, the browns are getting a lot of love here at four and a half i think it's that's fair to bet the browns but if it gets lower than three or even three just smash it out of this I don't know. The Browns just don't match up good against this team. I think like people are just seeing the record and like, oh my gosh, it's the Browns. And they're like thinking this game's going to be a lot closer, but I don't know. They're just, they just don't match up good. The, the Steelers' best receiver is still Juju. The worst team against slot corners is the Browns. Juju plays in the slot. Now you're adding Claypool. Johnson should play. James Washington's been good. They have that Ray Ray McLeod dude that gets the, the factored in touches. So yeah, I like the Steelers a lot on this side. Uh, on the my lock here, well, if you took it early, you got the football team at plus three and a half. It's now down to plus two and a half, so I don't like it as much. But th this line makes zero sense to me. When we got three and a half, I looked at it, and I was like, yep, that, that's a bet right there. I threw two units on it. I don't – no one can tell me this Giants team is 
three and a half are now two and a half points better than the football team. And I'm, the football team is not even good. I don't even care to play quarterback for the football team. Awesome. They'll play just as good as, as Daniel Jones has been playing, right? Like it, Daniel Jones had struggled against the Cowboys front seven. Now I guess he go against this front seven the football team, whose secondary is surprisingly playing good. I know I think I mentioned that last week, yeah. which I didn't think they were going to at all. And then the Giants, what do they do good on defense? Okay, they just funnel up the middle. I get the Redskins line isn't that bad, but they're just going to get the ball out quick like they did last week to J.D. McKissick, Antonio Gibson. So this isn't even like like I think the football team is better than the Giants. I just know the Giants aren't two and a half points better than the football team. If you got a three and a half grade, if you can get it a three, great. But yeah, this is just like, it's just a crazy line to me to think that the Giants are favored in a game without Saquon Barkley, without – I mean, Slayton and Evan Ingram, like, and Evan Ingram, they don't even use him. But anyway, they were giving him handoffs last week. Yeah, so, like, I don't even – yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, Bradbury will be on McLaurin, but it's not like McLaurin is being utilized and need to, to compete in games really that much. So, yeah, I like I like the two and a half here. No, I completely agree. The Giants are a complete and utter dumpster fire. Daniel Jones, I feel bad for the guy because he really has no chance to do anything because the offensive line leaves him out there to dry. He got destroyed last week up against Dallas, fumbled – Got his nickname back, Danny Fumble. So I like I like the Washington football team. I honestly think it's going to be Kyle Allen. If it's Alex Smith, I think the game is a little bit closer. But if it's Kyle Allen, I think they just run straight through the Washington football team, and it may not even be a close game. Or the Washington football team runs through the Giants is what I meant to say. So thank you guys for watching. Do you have anything to add here uh, before we end the video? No? Nope. Hopefully for a bounce back week. We are we are winning the competition though the the, the locks competition. So that's good. We are up one game. I I was up I was three and zero and then lost two in a row. But now we're bouncing back here with the Steelers minus three again. Lucas's lock is the Washington football team plus two and a half over the New York football Giants. So again, guys, if you want to take our picks, go ahead. You want to fade them. Go ahead. Let me know what you guys are taking down below in the comments. I like reading those. Sometimes uh, I even take the picks you guys are talking about, or I just like to talk about them. So have a great rest of your guys' day. Thank you guys all for watching. And I'll see you guys next week with some more Murder Your Bookie. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Now, actually, this is probably the last video of the day. So I'll see you guys on Sunday with a live stream in the morning with Tyler. So have a great rest of your guys' day. I really appreciate everyone watching. And I'll see you motherfuckers tomorrow. Good boy.